Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here breaking down the Thursday night football showdown slate on DraftKings for week 15. Uh, Thursday night we got a game between the Jets and the Ravens. Not going to be the best game to be honest with you. Uh, the Ravens are big favorites here. They should win this game easily. Right now they're 15 point home favorites as of the time I'm recording this video. 45 total, so we should see some points scored, but honestly, a lot of those points scored are probably going to be the Ravens, as they do have a 30 implied team total. Uh, we'll talk through this showdown slate, talk about all the viable plays. DraftKings is still running pretty big tournaments for showdown slates. Uh, I think there's an $11 or $10 um, entry fee tournament with a million dollar prize pool. I usually do play just a few lineups on these showdown slates. As we get later on into the season, especially when NBA starts, I don't get as much volume down. Uh, because I'm more focused on NBA, but I'll still have at least a couple lineups in play. Uh, we'll talk through this showdown slate, kind of give a quick breakdown. I will have a full written article over on Patreon for this showdown slate, uh, talking about all my favorite plays, best ways to construct a lineup. If you want to get access to some of the content I have available on Patreon, you can check all that out. Link is down in the description, patreon.com slash DFS by Noah. I do uh, articles for the Monday night and Thursday night games. I also have a ton of content going up for the NFL main slate. Most of that will go up on Friday and Saturday. I have a closing thoughts video go up Sunday morning. Also have content for NBA. I post NBA uh, content over on Patreon Monday through Friday. So if you want to check all the stuff I have available to offer over there, uh, you can do so. Link is down in the description. Um, also, I would appreciate if you guys would drop a like. If you enjoy these videos, I uh, definitely appreciate all your support. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. If you have not subscribed yet, click that notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. And as always, uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at DFS by Noah. But let's go ahead and run through this show on slate. Just give a quick breakdown. So at the top, just starting off with the quarterbacks, we got Lamar Jackson and Sam Darnold. Uh, Lamar Jackson, 13-8, Sam Darnold, 9,800. So Darnold is $4,000 cheaper. I mean, I'm just going to try and jam in Lamar Jackson on this showdown slate. I just don't think there's any player that has the upside that he has, that has the 25 to 30 point upside. If you're going to get 25 to 30 DraftKings points out of any player in this game, it's going to be Lamar Jackson. I mean, we need to keep an eye on the status of him. He did not, or he did not participate. He was limited on Monday's practice. He did throw in during uh, Thursday or Tuesday's practice, so there's a chance he's, or it's pretty likely he's able to play this week. I would imagine. At least as of Tuesday afternoon when I'm recording this video, I'll probably upload this video either Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. It seems likely Lamar Jackson's going to play, even though he's questionable as of Tuesday. I would imagine he plays for this game. He's the top play on this showdown slate. The way you beat the Jets is through the air. They've been a much better pass def or much better run defense than they have a pass defense. They're a pretty tough team to run on. Lamar Jackson's my top captain. He's a top overall play. He's expensive at twenty thousand seven hundred, but I'm fine just jamming in jamming him into the captain then just kind of figuring out with the rest of your lineup uh, Mark Ingram's in a tough spot the, this Jets team versus the run has definitely been good I don't really want to go to Ingram on a showdown slate he burned me in that game against the Rams I think that was a Sunday night showdown I didn't have any exposure to Mark Ingram he had a big game had a 111 rushing yards on 15 carries uh, he had a rushing touchdown he also had a receiving touchdown as well like, you're not going to get games from Mark Ingram, or you're not going to get those kind of games from Mark Ingram very often. In order, to him to, in order for him to put up a big game, he needs to score one, if not two, touchdowns. I mean, if you just look at his running back snap percentage this season, like, he doesn't get, like, a, work, a full workload. The most snaps he's played this season is 65%. Like, he's going to play probably 50 to 60% of the snaps. You're going to see Gus Edwards get some touches. Justice Hills will get some touches as well. He's not that true workhorse RB like Le'Veon Bell is. Like Between the two running backs in this game, I would much rather have Le'Veon Bell for $1,000 cheaper. It's not a good matchup for Bell either, but he's going to get probably 20 touches in this game. He gets a ton of work in the passing game, which is very valuable on DraftKings with the full PPR scoring. And honestly, my next favorite stud on the slate is probably Le'Veon Bell. It's definitely him and Lamar Jackson. Sam Darnold at 9,800 I'm a little scared of, especially in this spot on the road against a really good Ravens defense. I think I feel safer going to Le'Veon Bell for 400 less. So like my two favorite studs, at least as of now, are definitely Lamar Jackson and Le'Veon Bell. Looking at the receivers in this game, like it's really hard to predict which receivers in this game are going to put up the big outings. Like Robbie Anderson's been really good, but this is definitely a tough spot. I mean, this Ravens secondary is elite. They have Marlon Humphrey. I think Marlon Humphrey is primarily a, a slot corner, so he'll probably be on Jamison Crowder a lot. But just the last two weeks, Anderson's been has had big fantasy games, 20 and 28 DraftKings points, 
10 and 11 targets in those two games. We know that since the Jets are big underdogs here, they're going to have to throw a ton. Robbie Anderson should see plenty of volume, but he's priced up to 9K. Like, I think I'd rather drop down to probably Marquise Brown, who isn't going to play a ton of snaps, but when he's on the field, he's out there running routes. He has the upside. I mean, this is a guy that gives you 20, 25-point upside. I know he hasn't shown it much this season, but the way you beat the Jets is through the air. They don't have that good of a secondary. Jamal Adams is a good corner. I don't think he – I think he's actually been – uh, out for the season if I'm not mistaken I think he's been ruled out for the season so they could potentially be without him if I'm going to target a receiver in this game it's probably going to be either Marquise Brown at 8200 or Jamison Crowder at 7800 I know it's a tough matchup for Crowder but he just gets so much consistent volume every week pretty much six to eight targets every week he's been in that range it seems like just about every week he's I mean he had that one big game in week one against Buffalo with 17 targets on a site like DraftKings with full PBR scoring Crowder's firmly in play as a receiver option, but like none of these guys you're going to feel very good about. Mark Andrews is priced up to 8400 Don't really know if I want to go to him. He's a very touchdown-dependent player as well. Doesn't get the volume that you really want to see. Like I feel like a lot of my builds, I'm just going to be jamming in Lamar Jackson at captain and then just kind of playing some cheap plays. I'm fine going to the kickers and defenses on the slate, just given how bad all the other options are and just given that there's not a lot of other value that I like. The Ravens' defense is firmly in play for me at home, 5,800. They could easily force like three, four turnovers in this game. We could see them get three, four sacks. As big home favorites, the Jets are going to have to throw a lot. Sam Darnold's going to be dropping back a lot, which is going to force or which is going to give you the opportunity for sacks and pick sixes and force fumbles. Uh, so I really like the Ravens' defense. I think they're firmly in play, and rarely do I target defenses on showdown slates, but uh, Ravens are definitely going to be on my radar. Then you got just these like really thin receivers from the Ravens that you just never know which guy's going to have the big game. Just looking at the snap percentages from the Ravens wide receivers, uh, we can pull that up. The highest total played by a receiver uh, obviously was Marquise Brown, 72% last week in week 14. You had Willie Sneed play 62% of the snaps. Then you had Seth Roberts play uh, 45% of the snaps. Miles Boykin, 30%. Like, it's just going to be so hard to predict which one of these Ravens receivers has a big game, if any of them do. I mean, it's possible that none of them have a big game or even pay off their price tag. Willie Sneed's 5K, which really isn't that great of a price. He's honestly gotten priced up to where I don't have a ton of interest in him. It's a one-game showdown slate, so I guess, like, he's in play just because of this, so many, like, other bad options. Like, we just don't know where to go. If Mark Andrews winds up missing this game, that could definitely open up the tight ends. Nick Boyle. Hayden Hurst, if Mark uh, if Mark Andrews plays, I really don't feel confident in either guy. Like Nick Boyle's only getting two, three targets a week. He's very touchdown dependent. Same with uh, uh, Hayden Hurst. He had a big game last week, but it was all on one play. He scored like a 40 or 50 yard touchdown. He's only getting two to three targets a week. He's very hard to trust here. Honestly, I think the kickers are probably the best value plays on this showdown slate just with how bad all the other value is. Justin Tucker's a guy that's pretty reliable, can give you six to eight DraftKings points is pretty much his floor. He's got the potential for double digit points, which is like more than honestly some of these other guys. Sam Ficken, a guy that can get you six to eight points, got the potential for double digit points. Like rarely do I play both kickers on a showdown slate, but honestly this just feels like one of those showdown slates where I'm fine playing both kickers. I'm fine going to the defenses because like these cheap Jets receivers, these cheap Ravens receivers, you just don't feel very confident in. They're not playing a ton. They're just very touchdown-dependent players. They're very risky in general. Like, even if the Ravens score 30 points, we could see Lamar Jackson have two rushing touchdowns, Mark Ingram have a rushing touchdown, maybe the Ravens get a defensive touchdown. Like, none of these guys. I could see none of these guys being good plays. Um, even Demarius Thomas is not getting a ton of volume, three, four, or five targets. Like, he'd probably be the best cheap receiver to go to just given game script. Like, the Jets are going to have to throw in this game a ton. We'll need to keep an eye on his status. He is questionable. I uh, didn't participate in Tuesday's practice, so that'll be something worth noting. If he if he's out, I guess that could free up some more snaps for someone like Vincent Smith, who's really cheap. I mean, Smith was already playing a decent amount of snaps. He played uh, 49% in Week 14. Demarius Thomas played 52%. We could definitely see Vincent Smith become a viable, cheap play if Demarius Thomas is out, so I guess that'll be something to keep an eye on. But this is a really bad showdown slate. I'm going to be starting a lot of my builds with Lamar Jackson at captain. I know he's expensive, but five or you plug him in at captain, that still leaves you 58-60 remaining per player. 
then you just kind of look for the values. I'm fine playing both kickers. Rarely do I do that, but this is just such a bad showdown slate. Not a lot of good value you feel great about. You plug in both kickers with Lamar Jackson and captain. That still leaves you 71-66 remaining per player. Even if you want to play the Ravens defense in there as well, I'm totally fine doing that because the Jets could just get absolutely beat down in this game. That leaves you 78-50 remaining per player. So you could go to like Jameson Crowder, and then that'd leave you enough to play maybe one of the cheap receivers or... You could get up to someone else and then maybe just kind of try and punt with a value play. Like Ryan Griffin, I think, could be a viable cheap option. When he's been healthy this season, he's gotten pretty consistent volume. The Jets really don't have a good pass-catching tight end. He's kind of been that when he's been healthy. He didn't play last week, so we don't know his status heading into Thursday night. He didn't practice on Tuesday. If Ryan Griffin can play, he would become a pretty cheap option that I think is actually viable, 2200 you can plug him in and work him around this build. You could probably take out one of the kickers if you wanted to. Maybe go to Jameson Crowder or something, and then that leave you enough to play like Le'Veon Bell. So that's a route you could take. I'm fine punting with Ryan Griffin at, as a value play. I'm fine punting with the kickers, just given that there's no great value you feel good about. Like none of these fringe $200 plays you're going to feel good about. These cheap Ravens receivers, it's so hard to predict which one of those guys is going to have the best game. Like Given the opportunity and just snap percentage, I would imagine it'd be like Willie Sneed or Marquise Brown because they're just playing the most snaps and they're on the field the most. But we've seen Lamar Jackson just kind of do it all himself this season. Even in games where he puts up 26, 30 DraftKings points, like none of his receivers have big games. Like he can give you 30 DraftKings points on him set, like on his own, just throwing for 100 yards, one touchdown, then just getting all the rushing work. Like he could easily rush for 100 plus yards and a rushing touchdown and just be the guy that you need on this showdown slate. So. Assuming Lamar Jackson plays on Thursday night, I'm just going to be looking to build around him and then just kind of work from there. Just because there's nobody else that I feel really confident in. Like the Jets receivers, I don't feel confident in in this matchup. I mean, the, the volume should be there because they're going to have to throw a ton, but it's a really tough matchup. If I were to go to one, it'd probably be Crowder and Thomas just because they're so cheap and you kind of need the savings if you're paying up for um, Lamar Jackson at captain. Le'Veon Bell, I'm fine using as like a secondary stud option, 9,400 just given the volume that he gets. Tough matchup, but you're getting a guy that's going to get 13 to 15 carries, probably 6 to 8 targets, 9,400. Uh, you could definitely go to him, but really gross showdown slate. Not much to talk about, not a lot of viable plays, not a lot of plays you feel good about. Like I said, I'm just going to be looking to build around Lamar Jackson here. i uh, just kind of work from there. I will have more updated and in-depth thoughts over in my article on Patreon, which will probably go up Thursday morning. So hopefully we get some more injury news by then. We'll have some clarity on the status of Jackson and Andrews and Demarius Thomas. Uh, most likely be uploading this video to YouTube on Wednesday morning. And then uh, all my content for this shut on slate, my article will go live on Thursday morning. So if you want to check all that out over on Patreon, you can do so. Link is down in the description. You can check out my NBA content as well. I do post NBA content uh, Monday through Friday. I have packages available so you can get both sports uh, for a cheaper price than what you would normally pay for just each separate one. So check all that out. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Click that notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. Uh, if you have not yet, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Link is down in the description at DFS by Noah. But good luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Peace.